Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about the brand new skincare brand called Good Molecules. This is a brand that has been launched through Beautylish as their, I think, kind of in-home skincare brand. And it is said to be rivaling the other skincare brand called The Ordinary, which you're probably familiar, familiar with, as being a very affordable skincare company. So the thing about The Ordinary is it is very affordable. They have a lot of great offerings, but in general, they tend to have a more simplified formula for each of their products. So a lot of their products are things that are kind of one hit wonders or maybe two hit wonders, as opposed to other brands like Paula's Choice that may have something where there are a lot of different antioxidants in the product, in addition to whatever treatment ingredient there is, like an alpha hydroxy or something like that. So in this video, we are going to take a look at the Good Molecules brand to see if it's an even more more affordable and good option to the ordinary. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about good molecules and I'm going to compare product by product the things that Good Molecule is offering versus the counterpart in The Ordinary to let you know which one is better, which one is more value for the money, and overall give you an idea of whether Good Molecules is a brand that you might be interested in. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit that red subscribe button if you aren't already. Make sure you follow Allure Beauty on Instagram. I'm going to be running an Instagram exclusive giveaway soon, so make sure you follow on there. As always, I will put a link to the products that I discuss in the description box below, and I'll put them side by side with The Ordinary and The Good Molecules and where you can purchase them if you're interested, and a link to Ebate so that if you do make any online purchases, you can at least get some cash back on your order. If you haven't checked out the latest videos, there are two of them that I want you to take a look at. One is for Urban Decay's Naked Reloaded palette. I swatched that for you, and I do a swatch comparison to the original palette to see maybe if you want to invest in the Naked Reloaded or not, depending on whether you have your original palette or not. The second video that I will link for you is from NARS. They have the new spring 2019 collection called their Exposed Collection, which um, I really liked. So make sure you go check out swatches for that too. And make sure you stay tuned for upcoming videos. Notably, Tarte has launched a brand new line of their brand called Sugar Rush, and it is targeted more at a younger dynamic, but still has some cool, interesting looking products. So I'm I'm gonna do a full uh, kind of brand review for you on that soon. And also stay tuned for a follow-up video per your requests to swatch and compare the Naked Reloaded palette to Anastasia Beverly Hills's Sultry palette. Oh, and quickly, if you're curious about what I am wearing on my face, I have a new foundation. Uh, it's a foundation stick from Pure that I have been trying out. It is called the 4-in-1 foundation stick and they sent the shade light and when I first looked at it I thought oh this is going to be too light but actually this pretty much fits my skin perfectly so the shade match has been very good um, this product I would say has a little bit more of a thicker quality it's not quite as creamy my favorite uh, foundation stick has been the Vanish one from Hourglass. Um, this one from Pure definitely has more of a medium, uh, maxes out at a medium coverage, and it has a drier finish. So I think actually this formula would be better for people who have oilier skin. People with dry skin, I think this finish is not going to be moisturizing enough for you. And in terms of the products for my eyes, I purchased the Warrior 2 palette from Juvia's Place. It is an all matte palette and like with everything else that I've tried from Juvia's Place, I'm very impressed. Beautifully formulated, easy to blend and apply. And then I also picked up the Heroin Glow. This is the shade number two or yeah, baked highlighter shade number two, I think. And it looks like this. I was actually kind of surprised at how small the pan is compared to the packaging. I think that the packaging could be a little more um, economical or the pan at least could be bigger uh, for the price, but I do like the shimmer and the finish on the actual uh, highlighter. So that's basically what I'm wearing on my face. All right, let's get jumping into the new brand Good Molecules and start comparing it to The Ordinary. So let's just compare overall as a brand. 
The Good Molecules line is said to be very affordable and effective skincare, very much like The Ordinary. The kind of idea behind the brand is to bring you effective skincare at a price that is much, much less than the price that you normally see, even with more affordable skincare, like at the drugstore. So usually the prices that you're gonna be seeing are sub drugstore prices. In Good Molecules line, the starting price is actually $6. So as we go through, we are going to compare the price point, the amount you get, and then the ingredients to see which of these products might be better in which of the brands, The Ordinary versus Good Molecules. Now, before I did this video, I was originally planning to purchase some of the Good Molecules items because I have a lot of The Ordinary skincare and then compare them for you side by side. But then I realized some things that made me change my mind and I think you'll understand in a little bit throughout the video why I'm just comparing them from the ingredients list and my experience with The Ordinary. So jumping into the product side by side, let's start with Good Molecules Super Peptide Serum. This retails for $12 and the corollary in The Ordinary would be the Buffet Serum. And that product retails for $14.80. So with Good Molecules Super Peptide Serum, it says that it's supposed to target fine lines, wrinkles, and dullness. and the ingredients in here, there's a lot of ingredients actually, but also the size. So with Good Molecules Super Peptide Serum, you are getting one full ounce of product. And with the Buffet, you are also getting one full ounce of product, 30 milliliters. So we obviously know that it's a little more expensive to buy the Buffet than it is the Super Peptide Serum. And in terms of the ingredients, you're actually getting a fair amount of um, mirroring in the ingredients. With the Super Peptide serum from Good Molecules. You right away at towards the beginning get your peptides. You also in both products get glycerin towards the very beginning. Um, glycerin is more prominent in the buffet one from The Ordinary, but for the most part they have a, both have a lot of peptides and the ingredients are you know in the same ballpark. The problem with the Good Molecules formula is that it contains bergamot fruit oil and that is not a good ingredient for the skin. Bergamot oil is a plant extract or a plant oil that is fragrant. It's a volatile citrus oil and it can cause irritation on the skin. So that's the major thing for avoiding the super peptide serum and purchasing the Buffet instead. The Buffet is one of the best products that The Ordinary has to offer out of all the skincare uh, items that they have. And so paying a couple extra dollars more is definitely better with the buffet than buying a super super peptide serum that's a little less but has a volatile ingredient that's going to damage your skin. Next up, let's look at two exfoliating treatment products from each brand. So Good Molecules has something called Overnight Exfoliating Treatment for $6, and the corollary in the Ordinaries line is the, uh, I would say, is the glycolic acid 7% toning solution, um, and that retails for $8.70. So the Ordinaries costs more, but the thing is is that with the ordinary you get 240 milliliters of product and with good molecules you are getting a full ounce which want a full fluid ounce which is only 30 milliliters so the amount difference difference is insane and overall the ordinaries is leaps and bounds more affordable per milliliter per amount of product that you're getting so if all other factors were equal, you would definitely want to buy the toning solution from The Ordinary. Now, the overnight exfoliating treatment from Good Molecules does actually have more glycolic acid. It has 8.05% glycolic acid, whereas, as the name suggests with The Ordinaries, you're getting 7%. And if you see me looking down, it's because I am going, I have tabs open, going back and forth for each product and comparing the ingredients and all that kind of stuff, okay? So you're getting more, a little more glycolic acid with The Good Molecules, which is the main driving uh, ingredient that you're looking for when you're buying a product like this. The problem is, is that with good molecules uh, treatment, you are also getting a lot of bad ingredients again. So if you look at the ingredients list, you're very quickly getting alcohol, denatured alcohol, something that is drying to the skin, irritating to the skin, and damaging to the skin cells. Also, on top of that, later down in the list of ingredients, you are getting things like lime oil, uh, lemon fruit oil, and these are not just extracts, these are the actual oils of these products. Again, these are fragrant oils. Uh, you also get orange oil, again, bergamot fruit oil, which we just talked about with the first, um, first product, and grapefruit oil. 
Every single one of these oils is damaging, potentially damaging to the skin. They're volatile, they're fragrant oils that you should really try to avoid in your skincare. This is not a product that I would recommend, even if there were no corollary in the ordinary. It's just not something that I would recommend that you purchase, even at the very low $6 price point. The Ordinary's product, a lot more product. You get the glycolic acid right away in the list of ingredients, but it also has its own problem. The main thing being that the third ingredient listing listed is uh, rose water, which also can be, you know, it's fragrant. Um, it's a plant, plant extract that's fragrant and can also be irritating to the skin. So it doesn't have as many of these fragrant, potentially irritating oils as the Good Molecules one does. So the risk I think is comparatively lower, but that said, you should just go with a product that has a main glycolic acid in it, that also has good antioxidants and anti-irritating ingredients in it, and that don't have these potentially irritating components in it. So I would say you should avoid both of these, but if you're going to choose one, then you should choose the ordinary. Next up, each brand has a niacinamide type of product from Good Molecules. It's the niacinamide serum for $6. And from the ordinary, it is the niacinamide 10% plus zinc 1%. And that retails for $5.90, which is so interesting because the one from The Ordinary is actually less, and they both contain one ounce of product, 30 milliliters. So if they are otherwise the same, then you should go with The Ordinary. But let's look at the ingredients. They both start with water, and then the second ingredient is niacinamide. So both are delivering to you a large amount of the key ingredient that that's the reason you're buying the product. So they're pretty much on par in that sense. And then when you compare the other ingredients, I would say this is the closest in terms of um, the product from the Good Molecules being giving you the same benefits as the product from The Ordinary. The key difference I think is that with the Good Molecules um, Niacinamide Serum, you're getting a lot of hydrators in the ingredients. There are more ingredients in the Good Molecules uh, version than there are in the Ordinary version. On the other hand, and a lot of those are hydrators, on the other hand, the Ordinary has 1% zinc, which acts as an anti-inflammatory. So that will also sort of help in terms of hydrating or combating some you know, inflammation if you have that as an issue. So I think that at the end of the day, these are pretty much tied. The price difference is very, very small, even though technically the Ordinary is cheaper, it's only by 10 cents um, and they give you the same amount of product and they both deliver you know, there's more hydrators in the Good, Good Molecules version and there's zinc in the Ordinary version, which there isn't in the Good Molecules version. So I think this is one of the products where you wouldn't really go wrong with either version of the product. And the point of niacinamide is to help, there's some research that it helps uh, reduce the visibility of pores and give you evenness in the skin. Next, let's look at the brand's Squalene Oil products. So the Good Molecules brand has something called Squalene Oil and it retails for $8 and you get 13 milliliters. So that's less, you're getting 0.44 fluid ounces. The Ordinary has something called, they actually have two different squalene based products, but I'm gonna compare the 100% plant derived squalene, which um, has the ingredients that are closer to the one in the Good Molecules version. So this is a full ounce still, it's 30 milliliters, so you're getting more with the Ordinary. The price you pay with the Ordinary is $7.90. The price that you would pay with the Good Molecules is $8, but you are getting a lot more product with the Ordinary. So once again, you should go with the Ordinary, assuming that the ingredients are fairly similar. And when we talk about ingredients, oh, let me back up. Squalene is a wonderfully hydrating ingredient. So it helps um, protect the skin, moisturize it. And it says that it's a source of replenishing fatty acids and antioxidants. So going back to comparing the ingredients with the Good Molecules Squalene Oil, what do you get? It's just straightforward 100% plant-derived squalene oil. And what do you get with the ordinary? Well, the name kind of suggests what the ingredient is, which is squalene, and it's 100% plant derived. So these are exactly the same in terms of the listing of the ingredients. You're getting more product for less with the ordinary, so go with the ordinary. Next, let's look at the hyaluronic products for each. 
Good Molecules has something called the Hyaluronic Acid Serum, and that re retails for $6. And The Ordinary has Hyaluronic Acid 2% plus B5, and that retails for $6.80. So The Ordinary is a little more expensive with one fluid ounce, 30 milliliters, and The Good Molecules product is less at $6 with one fluid ounce, 30 milliliters. So a little less for the same amount of product with Good Molecules. But let's look at the ingredients. When you look at Good Molecules' Hyaluronic Acid Serum, we start with water, followed by a butylene glycol. And for these ingredients, hopefully I'm saying them correctly. I don't, I'm not 100% 100 sure if I am or not. Butylene glycol is more of a filler ingredient. It helps the texture of the product. It's then followed third by glycerin, which is a nice hydrator. And if you look at the ordinary's ingredients, you start with water also, followed directly by sodium hyaluronate. Sodium hyaluronate is the key ingredient. That is the hyaluronic acid. So you are, you have to, when you look at the good molecules, uh, hyaluronic acid serum, you have to wait until one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's ninth. The hyaluronic acid is ninth in the ingredients list, and it only has a total of uh, 10, 12 ingredients. So the amount of hyaluronic acid that you're getting in the Good Molecules product is a lot less than the hyaluronic acid that you're getting in the Ordinary product. So at the end of the day, it's much more worth getting the Ordinary product to get a good amount of that key ingredient that um, is the reason why you're buying the product in the first place. The serum from Good Molecules has a lot of other more filler type ingredients, not necessarily bad ingredients, but things that are not actively doing what you want them to for the skin. Um, before you get to the key ingredient of hyaluronic acid. So you should just invent, uh, invest the, what is it, 10 cents more or something like that, um, or 80 cents more, I guess, less than a dollar more to get the actual ingredient right away that you want with The Ordinary. And on top of that, you're getting more beneficial ingredients from The Ordinary's uh, product. You're getting things like citric acid as an antioxidant and to give you some vitamin C. You're getting glycerin to help hydrate. And then you get B5, which is another ingredient that that helps to hydrate. So at the end of the day, The Ordinary definitely wins with uh, this class of products. And next, let's compare Good Molecules' Ultra Hydrating Facial Oil for $10. Sorry if you can hear my chair squeaking back and forth. Um, compared to The Ordinary's 100% Organic Virgin Sea Buckthorn Fruit Oil. So there isn't a one-to-one -one, uh, exact uh, comparison product for the ultra hydrating facial oil from Good Molecules. And in fact, The Ordinary has a bunch of different facial oils where they focus just on one type of oil in each product. So it was a little harder for me to give you a comparison, but I think this will be enlightening. Um, the ultra hydrating facial oil for $10 from Good Molecules uh, gives you 13 milliliters, again, 0.44 fluid ounces, so not a full fluid ounce. The Sea Buckthorn Fruit oil from The Ordinary costs $14.90, so a good amount more, almost $5 more, and you are getting, though, a full fluid ounce, so you're getting 30 milliliters. So once again, compared to the amount of product that you get, you are actually paying much less per milliliter if you buy the product from The Ordinary. Now, both of these products have a sea buckthorn oil. Obviously, the one from The Ordinary, that's all that it contains. It's just sea buckthorn oil. Interestingly, the oil from Good Molecules has sea buckthorn oil as the second ingredient, and as the first ingredient has basically green tea um, oil as an antioxidant. So you're getting two different very good ingredients with the Good Molecules item, as opposed to the just one note uh, ingredient with the Good Molecule, uh, the ordinary version of this product. So that might be a reason to purchase the oil from Good Molecules as opposed to the One Note product from The Ordinary. But the thing is, is at the end of the day, you are getting more than twice the amount with The Ordinary's oil. And so it would actually just be cheaper for you to purchase the One Note oil from The Ordinary and then purchase another one of their One Note oils and you would still be paying less per ounce or per yeah per ounce per milliliter of product versus buying this one 
hydrating facial oil from Good Molecules. Does that make sense? So the Good Molecules facial oil has two ingredients, which are great, but you could buy two separate bottles from the ordinary of two different oils and mix them together yourself and you'd still be paying less at the end of the day per fluid ounce or per milliliter of product. So once again, the ordinary wins out, but if you just wanna buy one product and have the convenience of both of them in there, then maybe short term, you'll just go ahead and buy the Good Molecules one. And the last product that is offered by Good Molecules is actually a product that doesn't have really a corollary in The Ordinary's line, and that is the Wake Up Eye Serum. It retails for $8. It contains one fluid ounce, 30 milliliters of product, and it's said to brighten, firm, and reduce puffiness around the eyes with this targeted eye serum. So The Ordinary doesn't have this type of eye serum. But the interesting thing is that when you look at the ingredients in the eye serum from Good Molecules, this is what we get. We start out with some hydrators you start with water followed by glycerin you also have some caffeine in here not a lot it's towards the end of the ingredients list and you have some cocoa seed extract and you also have some pumpkin fruit extract which act as antioxidants so this actually seems like a pretty decent product if you wanted to invest in it and eight dollars is a great price for something like an eye serum. Um, usually those things at a fluid ounce are crazy expensive. I wouldn't say that this is a fantastic eye serum just because if you look at the ingredients, everything in the beginning, uh, with the exception of the glycerin, which is more of a hydrator, everything in the beginning is more of like a texture ingredient, so a more quote unquote filler type of ingredient, and you're not getting to the caffeine or the antioxidants until you get towards the end of the ingredients list. So, you know, it is only $8, so you're kind of giving what you pay for, I guess. You're not getting a huge punch of anti aging ingredients or super unique hydrating type of things in this product, but for $8, I wouldn't say that it's a product that you should necessarily pass on or that you're wasting your money on. So those are all seven items that Good Molecules is currently offering and the comparison to the product that they have in the ordinary that kind of mirrors the product in Good Molecules. So I think at the end of the day, it's pretty clear that the ordinary still wins, not only in terms of the effectiveness of the ingredients that are included and the uh, benefit of the those ingredients and the lack of harm of many of those ingredients, whereas in Good Molecules' um, products, there were several of them that had actively bad ingredients in there. But also in terms of price point, it's better overall for almost every single one of those products. So pricing, value, and ingredients and quality, The Ordinary is going to win out. And really only the eye serum is the outlier on that, and that's mainly because The Ordinary doesn't offer something like that or exactly like that product. I know some people might also also be curious about Revolution Beauty's skincare line. I won't go too in depth on that topic. I will just say that it's harder to compare because the, the, uh, they don't exactly have mirrored products in uh, Revolu Makeup Revolution and The Ordinary, so it's hard to make a side-by-side -side comparison. The products with Revolution Beauty are well-priced also. They are very affordable, although I think I will say that overall the pricing seems to be more than what you would need to pay with The Ordinary. I think the cheapest thing with Revolution Beauty, it looks like is $7 and they have a lot of things, oh no, actually there's one that's $6, but a lot of them are more in the $12 to $14 price range. And I did pull up a couple of these products that have bad ingredients in them, notably uh, alcohol very early in the ingredients list. So I think that although The Ordinary, some, there are some products that are probably problematic in that line that we didn't necessarily talk about in this video. I think that overall, The Ordinary has a much stronger showing of good products with good ingredients at a really affordable price point. So nothing yet quite that I think is on the market to dethrone The Ordinary when it comes to the portion of the market that's super affordable and offering you good quality ingredients in the skincare. Again, I think that The Ordinary still lacks in the area of having multifaceted uh, products with multiple really, really good ingredients that all work together in a more complex way. 
they tend to be a little more one note, but I think that at the price point that they're offering you the skincare, that is more understandable. And for the most part, even if you were to buy multiple items from The Ordinary and combine them together to make your own more complex product with a more complex interaction of ingredients the way you might find with a uh, more higher end or more expensive skincare product that already has those ingredients all mixed into one bottle. I think you, at the end of the day, usually are spending less with The Ordinary. So I hope that this video was interesting and helpful to you. If you have a couple seconds, please give this video a thumbs up or share it to let people know that maybe The Good Molecules is not uh, as wonderful of a gift to the skincare community as we might have thought it was. Um, and let me know in the comment section below any other thoughts that you have, if you've tried some products from Good Molecules, what you think. Now, of course, in this video, I'm not comparing something like uh, whether one texture or finish of one product might be superior to the other. I think that though, when it comes to skincare, those kinds of concerns are secondary to whether you're getting really effective quality ingredients in the skincare product, whereas with something like makeup, you might really uh, prioritize much more highly something like the finish of a product or the texture of a product. But in any case, I hope that you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for taking the time to watch as always, and I'll see you in the next one.